Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to test out how well this, uh, the, the sensors can track our touch controller and how far we can we go before we lose tracking. So right now we the, my setup is a 360 setup, so I have one in that corner and uh, this other sensor in that opposite corner. So where I'm standing right now, uh, I have one sensor in that corner and one sensor in this corner. The distance from where I'm standing to that uh, this sensor, but that sensor over there is about 14 and a half feet. The, sense, uh, the distance from here to there is about 11 and a half feet. And then the diagonal distance from that sensor to that sensor is about 18 and a half feet apart. This is way beyond what Oculus uh, recommend. So then let's see how well we can track. So right now, whole sensor can see my controllers. So obviously, I have no issue tracking right here. Um, I'm actually very far from both of them and no issues. So if I move back a little bit close over here, there are some slight issues, but this is actually beyond that uh, that length that I was telling you about my rooms because this little corner right here, we have an indentation into the wall. So I'm actually a lot further back and now 14 and a half by 11 and a half. So I'm gonna walk back and now we're going back to uh, the uh, 14 and a half by 11 by and a half, uh, 11 and a half feet, I have no problems. So right now I have no issues. Let's move down to the floor and see how well the tracking is. Okay, I'm on the, the ground right now. This is where I start having a little issue with the tracking right here. Um, so if I stand back up, I'm fine. So let's move a little bit closer. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit too close to the floor, no problem with tracking. They can, both sensors can see me, I have no problem, okay? Now I'm gonna move to that corner and then I'm gonna move the camera to this other end so you can, guys can see me better. Okay guys, so right now you are looking at me uh, right above you guys where the other sensor is and this corner over here is where the other sensor is. So we're gonna test out how close we can go to this one sensor before we lose tracking. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to turn my back from you guys and then this will basically isolate my controller so the other sensor cannot see me. Alright, so let's start moving and see how well we can uh, how far we can go. Okay. Right now I'm still have I still have tracking. Okay, so right now I'm, um, I lost tracking right here. It's uh, my hand stop doing funky stuff. <coughs> so the distance the optimal distance here is about two feet from the um, from me where my controllers are to the, the corner of the wall. So yeah, tracking is very good even if you go up this close. I mean, we're not going to be playing in this close because we're probably going to hit the wall anyway. Okay, so now let's, I'm going to turn this way and now I'm going to isolate the, uh, the sensors. So this one cannot see me now and only that sensor where you guys are can see me. And we're gonna see how close or how far we can go before we lose tracking. So right now where I'm standing, pretty much on the opposite corner, the tracking is bad. I mean, I have my hand, it's not moving well, it's moving, but it's not moving as well. Um, if I, I have to put them here, basically, so that way that other sensor cannot see me. So right now when I put them here, tracking is actually not good at all. Um, it's not moving like it should. So I'm going to walk closer. And I still have some issue with tracking. I'm going to walk a little bit closer. A little bit closer. And right now, tracking becomes perfect. Stable. So the distance from where I'm standing now to where the sensor is, is about 7 to 8 feet. Okay? So you, so you don't want to go above the 8 feet limit because then you will want to risk of uh, losing tracking. So I'm going to get down to the ground and see if I'm still being tracked, that's fine. Yeah, at this point, I'm on the floor, I'm still being tracked, no problem. And in my other video where I test out the headset and see how far we can go, the headset can go up to about 16 and a half feet with no issues. And the reason is the headset have a lot more sensors to uh, than compared to the controls that we have, so that's probably why. Okay, so some of the, in the past couple of days, I've been playing a lot of games, a lot of, 
a lot of variety this game. And when I'm not playing it, I have someone else playing it. So that way we can get this constant testing of how well the controllers are functioning. Uh, when you're in a game scenario, uh, when you are playing real life games. I mean, we're not going to be, you know, pushing ourselves into corners, obviously, for the majority of the time. So when we're on a play space, we want to see how well the controllers are uh, tracked. And what I notice is, uh, I say, it's pretty solid. The tracking is very, very good. Um, there was one time I had some issue uh, while I was playing Unspoken. Um, all, all the others, uh, people that play and use these touch controllers, they said they have no issues really with the controllers. So the one time when I was, was playing Unspoken, all of a sudden my right hand keep sliding away. It comes back and it slides away. Left hand, no problem. So at that point, I was thinking maybe the sensor cannot see me, so I have to go closer. So I move in the right line of sight where the sensor is and uh, move a little bit closer to the sensor as well, and I still have this, this issue. At that point, I was thinking maybe um, there's a hardware issue in this controller because this controller is obviously fine, this one's not. So what I did next was I took out the battery, do a heart reset, basically take out the batteries and then put the battery back. And then after I did that, the tracking um, issue reduced by about 60%. Still doing this a little bit, but not as much. So at that point, I began to think to myself, well, what, what actually happened was I had my computer on for um, a lot, many days in a row, and I was downloading game, I was streaming stuff, I was doing videos, I was uh, editing YouTube videos, all sorts of stuff. And the one thing to keep in mind is that VR software is very demanding. It's going to drain the resource of your PC big time. So what I end up uh, uh, doing is I went and closed out all my uh, program on the computer, even the Oculus homepage itself, and then basically uh, open it back up and see what happens. So after I close out all the program, open up Oculus homepage, I don't have any issues anymore. I mean, that was the only time I had some problems. And to uh, keep in mind, I'm not running top of the line components here on my PC. I'm running a GTX 1070 and an i5 66K. Um, <coughs> 6600K, sorry. Um, so it's definitely not the top of the line. So that well, is it's kind of expected to run into uh, software issues once in a while because of the resource, uh, PC resource, it just, you know, sometimes could be maxed out. <coughs> Now, I'm going to get into another way of uh, showing you guys how to see what is the best distance for your sensors and whether you need to move your sensor around a little bit to get the best tracking. So we're going to do what we call a wobble test and this test will basically tell you whether you have a controller issues, a sensor issues or a software issues. Okay, for this test uh, we want to see if the controller having issues or whether it's uh, the sensor that's not being tracking the controller correctly or there's a software issues. So this test I call it the wobble test. Um, you probably Some of you probably have heard this before. So what you want is you want to put both controllers on a flat surface like this. <coughs> uh, the surface I want it to be slightly above the ground. Okay, You don't want to put the controllers directly on the ground because uh, sometimes there's an issue with the calibration and the ground might be slightly off. Uh, when you actually wear the headset, so you might not be you be able to see the controller, or you might see the controller flying up in the air, which is um, we don't want that. So put it on a, a box. In this case, I'm using my Oculus Rift headset box, and you put your controls like this, and then you go to Oculus Home, which is a a, a stable software to use to test this. If you use other games, I will be uh, careful and I'll get to that later. Now, when you put your headset on, both, if you see one sensor start, uh, controller start doing this, and the other one is sitting there just fine, that doesn't mean this controller is at fault. Uh, there's a hardware issue with it, or, or anything like that, okay? So what you want to do next is you want to go ahead and switch places, take take this controller, put it over there, and that one, put it over here, and now, if this controller start doing this, this tells us that the, it's not the hardware issue with the controller. The controllers are working just fine. 
but it tells you that there might be some tracking issues, okay? Yeah, one of your sensors might be too far away and it cannot see the controller, that's why it started doing this. <clears throat> now you're gonna test this in some games, I will be real careful. Uh, maybe pick games from Oculus Studio themselves to, to test with. Um, don't try a third party game because some of them are not reliable. And the reason I said that because, uh, for, for example, a Search and Simulator, that game is a fun game, I love it. but. I, it gets very annoying when you play with it because the it's not polished for the controllers. I keep having issues with picking up objects in the games. Um, when the objects are very close to each other, I try to. It's, it's hard to isolate it. I keep end up picking up the wrong things or dropping things, and sometimes my hands shake a little bit here and there too. So uh, that that's just a uh, software issue that needs to be addressed by the developers. So don't worry about using those uh, out uh, third party games. Try to use what we have and what we know will work. And so far I test throughout different games and Oculus Home is probably the best one to, to test this on. <coughs> and if you move your uh, sensor closer and you're still getting some sort of tracking issues, the next step you need to do is go ahead and make sure you don't have a ton of stuff open on your PC because it's draining up your resources. So you want to go ahead and close all those stuff out and maybe even restart Oculus homepage itself. And then we open it and then check again. And that most of the time should correct it. And if you follow all the steps here and you're still having some sort of, uh, the most important part is if you switch the controller and you still notice the same old controllers start doing this. And even if you move the sensor close, even the software is, is reliable, then you might have a controller issue itself so you might want to send it back to Oculus contact Oculus whoever you bought it from and have them take a look at it okay I hope you enjoy this video and we'll look forward to see you in the next one